Let's go. It is Stocks and Bars, the stock market hip hop podcast, the only place where you find hip hop mixed with finance. And this is the Cliff Notes episode. And you know what we do here. We recap what our last episode was about. I last had my guy Marcus on, and we talked about how he became a lawyer. All right. We talked about growing up in the 80s. We talked about our favorite hip hop time frame and more. So make sure that you check out that prior episode for the full episode in the conversation that we had because we had a blast. So in the cliff notes, you know what we do here. We get down and we talk a little bit more from the last episode. So when we talked, we talked about how he was a lawyer and there was some things going on in the representation of there. We're going to talk about representation in this episode and the meaning of what that truly is. Representation in industries across the world, all right? We're gonna also dig into the USA primarily. So let's go. All right, let's dig a little deeper in here. I got a couple things we can chat about. Representation, first things first. What does that mean? As our culture continues to grow, what does that mean? In the U.S., it is about between 13 to 14 percent black. All right. It's what they call a race. I like to call it culture because there is no such thing as race in my mind. There are just separate cultures. But anyway, 13 to 14 percent is going to be the number that we're going to focus on today because percentages should be relative. All percentages should be relative. So that means whatever you go to industry wise, if it is a great sample of what the U.S. represents, that should be the number. Okay, if I go anywhere in any workforce, you should be able to easily say 13 to 14 percent is probably here. All right. So let's check into it. All right. Back to what Marcus was talking about. All right. As far as lawyers are concerned. So when I went to Google, all right, this is all Google. You can always go to Google and you can follow along with me. When I went to Google and I checked out what is the demographics or what are the demographics of lawyers? Demographics of lawyers. According to what I found from a 2020 study, 5%, 5%. So that means everybody else is 95%. Didn't break all that down. But we can say that out of lawyers, 5% of lawyers are black. So is that representative of the U.S. or not? The obvious answer is no, it's not. So why is that? All right. Why is that? I want everybody to think about that. Why is it that there are not enough black folks that are lawyers? All right. Think about that one. Next thing you know. I also talked about my aspirations as a youngster to be an astronaut. I'm not going to sit here and say I had this big vision of it, but it was a thought that I had and I really, really love space. And I thought about this before one of my friends told me that it wasn't possible. Was my friend correct? Like I said, I never know. I didn't have the access to figure that out, but I did have the representation to show me that his proof was in the pudding i didn't see it so fast forward to now here i am a plus 40 year old male and i look at it and it says three percent of astronauts are black all right this is according to a 2023 study so that is recent as we talk about it for this year a 2023 study shows three percent of astronauts are black so even back then my friend (laughs) was right can't imagine it saying that it was higher back then you know it could have been I, I could totally be wrong but what i can't imagine is that it was any higher than three percent when i was in school at that point in time in the 90s so why is that why is that that there are no black astronauts technically i mean three percent of them are let's think about that as well so let's go to the one that they often associate us with sad just jail all right i'm not a fan of that but 
The stats are, because this is what it shows. 38% of the jail population, right, is black. So that means one in three. One in three people in prison are black. Let's go, let's go all the way back to what I just said before about how the representation of the U.S. is, right? 13 to 14% is what is black in the USA. So if we snatch that 13 to 14% straight out, okay? Out of that 13 to 14%, one third of this population is in prison is what they're saying. The prison population is what makes this up. So when they tell you that we have a higher chance of going to prison, that is why. Anyway, 38%, this is a 2023 study. That's not cool. And something has to change about that. Let's go on to what the government has. All right. The government. So in the workforce for the government. I have 14 percent as being black to a 2023 study. So 2023, that's this year. Government is ding, covers the mark. All right. Government is doing their job. Or should I say, we're doing our job as being represented, representative <laughs> in the government. All right. So between 13 and 14, that represents us. I want to go to something else deeper here, right? Because as I continue to learn about myself and culture and everything, and cultures, not just mine, but cultures in general. I wanted to look into what a life insurance agent is, right? Because as I explore leaving my legacy behind for my kids, I often saw that it was tough for me to find somebody who looks like me as a life insurance agent. Although, shout out to my guy, Greg Skeen. We connected. It was one of the few. So when I looked at it, this is a 2022 study. A 2022 study shows that out of the life insurance agents, 9%. Are black all right we're, we're warming up we're getting close there i think that's relative i think that's on the low side relative we want to go relative for for 12 to 14 percent but nine percent is what that is we can go with that all right i'll accept nine how do you feel about that how do you feel next shout out to wordsworth on this because he became one of these a teacher a teacher all right, so when I look at a 2022 study for teachers, it's 10%. That's relative, that's fairly relative, low side relative. So 10% of teachers are black, all right? We could go further down to split that male-female to go ahead and go with Wordsworth, what he was telling us when he was on a podcast. Black male teachers are needed. <laughs> we need to think about this. Why are we not becoming black male teachers? Now, I want to save this one for last. All right. What we all try to be when we're coming up from the hood. An NFL player, an NBA player, some athlete of some sort. All right. We have all these aspirations to do this because this is our way out. And it is such a low percentage chance of us making it to the those levels but some reason we all think that we can get there why is that that's because we all have this <laughs> belief but we should be becoming something else <laughs> because there's more need there but anyway nba 72 percent of the nba players are black 72 percent according to a 2022 study 72 percent of nba players are black it's going over to the NFL. NFL are 58% black according to a 22, 2022 study. So majority of both of these sports are dominated by us. All right. And I'm talking about dominated by us. So those are the stats for the players. Let's talk about the owners. If we have that much representation in that league, both of those leagues, you would think that that would transition over to the owners, correct? Eh, completely wrong. Let's talk about the NBA first. NBA is 7% ownership of black folks. 7%. We're talking about 72% of us play 
but only 7% own. That's a big disparity. Why is that? We need to ask that question too. I want everybody to always ask the question why. Be curious. Why is that? Dig into that. NFL. Zero percent. There are no black owners. Zero. There is zero percent. When we say minority owners, there are only two, but none of them are black. Why is that? 58% of NFL is black, but there are zero black ownership. Why is that? We need to dig into this. We need to ask this question. I'm not sitting here saying I have the answer, but this is a discussion we need to have. Why? It's only fair to us that we have some type of representation in there for ownership. All right. We are the players. We can become the owners. Now, let's transition here. I want to talk about imagery. That's one thing that I did talk about in the episode. What representation is It's imagery. All right. And why imagery is important. Imagery. It's an emotional, influential, persuasive connection. All right. When you see something you can automatically tell what it is, all right? You see a picture of a house, you envision a house, and then all of those perceptions that you have of a house come with that vision of things that you personally have endured. That's why imagery is so important. When it comes to imagery, brains process images way quicker than it does text. The visuals will always simplify communications. This is why you can play Pictionary. You can write down a picture and everyone can just guess what you're doing when you write it down or draw it. The images always stand out. And like I said, the emotional connection. And when it comes to imagery in the world that we live in, that translates to marketing. This is why everybody comes to hip hop. So now let's go into the meat and potatoes of this right now. Why hip hop is so important. The stats for hip hop. Let's jump into it. All right. We're going to track along with what I got here. Some things that I already pulled up. So I went to Google to do some simple searches as usual. And I looked at what are the statistics? OK, what are the demographics of people who love hip hop? And you might be shocked <laughs> how popular hip hop really is. So I keep telling you exactly how it is. But if you haven't done the research yourself, this is the episode for you. 2023 all right follow me here headphoneaddicts.com this is where i found the stats that i'm about to tell you right now and it is showing for you right now for those of you who are seeing it on video 2026 30 percent of the top 100 billboard songs came from hip-hop and it's been continuing to rise since then so let's scroll down here and here is what we're going to talk about most all right 26% of music listeners worldwide listen to hip hop and rap. 26%, 26%. That is one in four. That is a huge demographic. One in four people. Out of these one in four people, what are their ages? Ooh, well, let's go along with that. Rap and hip hop is most popular among 16 to 24 year olds and listeners from black communities. Boom. Hip hop is black. Hip hop is black. Okay. And in the marketing word, black means hip, cool, and young. 16 to 24 year olds. This are this is going to be the people who are entering the workforce, going to get a little bit of their money. They're going to be the first exposure to actually being consumers. There is your key. All right. So 26% of the people, 16 to 24. All right. Then just to give you a little bit of the other stuff here, Drake is one of the most listened to rappers. Hence why he has deals with Sprite and so-and-so. And 2021, Jay-Z is the most successful rapper as far as revenue is concerned at 470 million but i don't like counting people's pockets so this is what we're going to connect with here all right why hip-hop is so important and why marketing pursues hip-hop so heavily 
Next one that I'm gonna to do to connect this dot here is let you know, I'm going to marketingdive.com. All right, and this is going to show you why brands are doubling down on hip hop. And this was in 2020, so it's a little bit dated, but still relevant because this is still going on to this day. All right, and this talks a lot about Post Malone in the beginning. And what I wanna go down to is this quote right here. Post Malone is always truly him. All right, this is from the SVP of Business Development for Cashmere Agency. It's a quote from him. Always truly him and so authentic to Bud Light. <laughs> it just has been a natural relationship. Get out of here, Bud Light. Get out of here, you kick rocks. What authentic means, all right? These code, these little buzzwords that they always do, right? Is that they're marketing to who? 16 to 24 year olds who love hip hop, right? Okay, they're going boom. I'm going for the biggest chunk and I can do it cheaply to talk to these one in well, 25% of people. I can talk to these 25% of people at a 16 to 24 year old right now. Okay, and I can tell them how hip and young Post Malone, he's so cool. Oh, he's drinking Bud Light. I can drink Bud Light. Boom. There's the connection. There's the imagery right there. You understand this? They don't care about the 40 year old who may be drinking Bud Light, which I don't. Because you've already decided to drink Bud Light. They don't need to convert you. All right. Marketing is to tell the people who don't know about it that they can get access to it. I need to think about this, man. Think about this on a deeper level here. Why these things happen. This is the importance of the whole consumer economics, all right? As you know, the stock market, all of this good stuff, all of this is consumer driven. So as I break all of this down granular for you, you understand the importance of hip hop. We are the biggest marketing tool there is, but yet we have basically no representation of ownership in fields at all. We need to own something, all right? In conclusion, this is what we need to do. Ownership, this is key. We've, hold, we've heard so many different artists from the, the early 90s who were in deals that they said were bad. And at the end of the day, they didn't make the money that they thought they were gonna end up making. And they didn't make the money that we thought <laughs> that they were making, which is a perception thing too. Regardless of that, we need ownership, and that is, that is gonna change. I think in this generation right now, we are learning the mistakes of what happened, because these artists are con coming out and telling us this stuff, and as we continue to grow and get more data from stuff like our phones, all right, we have access to the greatest tool in the world. This is stuff that we can learn, and we learn from our mistakes and we get better. So let's continue to get better. Let the culture continue to grow. All right, that's it for the Cliff Notes episodes. As far as the stock market is concerned, I want to tell you, at this point in time in this year, you're probably going to get ready for a pretty decent pullback. All right, we've been going back and forth, back and forth for a while. I think the time is going to be drawing near. All right, if you've been following me on my YouTube channel, if you're not, make sure you change that. It's Stocks and Hip Hop. Go there now. Stop wasting time. Go there right now and go to that YouTube. Hit that follow. Give me a thumbs up on the video you watch. We're going to probably move down a little bit more. All right. And that's all good because this is going to give you the discount. This is the discount that you've been looking forward to. And there are going to be plenty of deals on the table that come up. So I'm looking at the market to make a move to the downside. And when that happens, what I strongly believe for our culture is to get ownership. And the stock market is one good way to do that. All right. So that's it. You know what time it is. It's time for those bars. Yo, this hip hop, I done heard every possible way a gun can shoot. The mistakes we made in them early days, they haunt the youth. But I learned from mine and observing rhymes. If you want the truth, you listen to it. The stocks and bars, the speakers pump the proof. I had to represent, glad that I would get a chance to lead. I grabbed a different pen and shared with you the scribbles from my ink. A kid from Brooklyn made a podcast that would change the world. And when I do it, all I'm asking is a name referral. 
Stocks and Bar.